Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 Dynasty video. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how the transfer portal works how to use it and answer all the questions I've seen in the comments. So after all of the season is over, you've made it past the national championship and you've gotten to the off season, you get to off season recruiting week one of four. This is where the transfer portal and off season recruiting will open. You'll see it as your top tab. You do want to click in there. Now, the first thing you do want to note is that it does, it is dependent similar to recruiting on your hours, scholarships and targets. So my first thing that I want to tell you guys off rip when you start a new dynasty, always save a few scholarships for the end of the year. So let's just say you, you committed 31 players. You'd only have four scholarships remaining at this point. If you had committed 35 players, you would not be able to participate in the off season, in the transfer portal. Transfer portal is kind of like CFB's free agency in comparison to NFL or Madden, right? So save some scholarships. With all that being said, you can do 35 scholarships and then a few guys don't end up committing or you end up losing out, you will open some up, but I always like to save at least like two open and then I lose a few more and end up like at 31 anyways. But I like to keep at least three to four, maybe five open, it really depends. Now, the benefit of the transfer portal, how to use it, why to use it, the transfer portal is a great way to round out your roster. So for instance, right, if you look at here, you'll see your needs. Let's say you did your whole recruiting process and you, you finished the year and you realize, oh my Lord, like I recruited a quarterback, a wide receiver, halfback, but your team had four senior cornerbacks, two senior uh, free safeties, and you now have a barren secondary. You forgot, or you didn't win any, right? Or you just didn't win. You either forgot or you didn't win them. This is a great way to round out your roster because if you don't, you're going to be fielding a team of walk-ons next year. You do not want to be in the SEC as LSU, right? And go out next year with 60 overall walk-on corners because you forgot to recruit or you didn't win them. So I like to save a few, even potentially upwards of that, like I said, depending on your situation. But this is a great way for me to now get the corners I need and the halfbacks I need. Now, the transfer portal is very similar to recruiting. You can sort by stars or you can sort by interest, right? This is the place where you can be more, more aggressive. I don't like to mess around my recruiting class. When I'm recruiting, I like to make sure that I'm getting the most, like the bang for my buck, but it's the transfer portal. This is kind of like hit or miss, right? Just you're getting them or you're not getting them. In the recruiting class, you could really mess up your whole next year without doing this. This is kind of extra. So you can sort by first and you could just go like you do recruiting and take what you can get, or you could be aggressive because why not? You have the hours, you have the time. This should be a little bit easier than recruiting because you're only going to be focusing on a few players. So you can really go all in. So for instance, let's look at the top of the board right now at the four stars or by rank. You can do any of the above. So the number two player on this board is this guy, but I have a deal breaker, just like recruiting playing style. I have a good DT. They don't think they're going to play. They don't want to come here. Same thing with this guy. He has a deal breaker for playing style. Now the first one's a quarterback. So we'll start by trying to recruit this quarterback against Alabama. Holstein, we'll start by recruiting Lagway. We need a quarterback. And then you can also go to interest. Like I said, I still would. I still don't think it's a bad idea to round out. I think I think like first you want to round out your class, but I don't think it's a bad idea to then try to round out and get some easy ones, right? So if you look here in the first right here, Chris, he actually wants to play for us. You can get some easy four stars, free safety. Number two, they kind of want to play for us. And you can go on down to Alexander. So if you look here, it starts off very similar. So there's four total weeks, right? And it's similar to how you would do a recruit, but it's different in the sense of how it sets up. So you have plenty of hours. So here's, you can kind of go crazy if you're a higher team, even if you're a lower team, you still have enough hours to kind of do what you want. You can definitely be more vigilant. Like I always say, get out your calculator, right? Bring your phone out and divide. So let's say you have four total scholarships to offer. Let's say you have 31 out of 35. You can only offer a total of four, at least in the initial week. I would do this five times four is 20, right? Make sure you save at least 20 points on top of this. Cause you can go through, you can add a bunch of players to your list. You can go through and you could just go ahead here and add a bunch of players and start scouting. If you're a team that only has like 250, 350 scouting points or hours, and you go and scout all these players, you may not be able to offer a scholarship and not offering a scholarship week one is going to be so detrimental. You're pretty much going to lose on any top guy you want. So make sure you go through and you scout very simple. You just keep going through, you're wasting your hours. Just make sure you're saving that 20 minimum points to offer scholarships. And then on top of that, your recruiting actions, right? So keep that in mind as well. Then you have to divide your recruiting actions. Understand that, let's say you offer a scholarship, you're probably gonna want to offer, send the house, right? Because you have all the hours to work with. So that's 50. So again, back to the, back to the four players. Do it based on what you have. But if you have four players, that's 20 points for scholarships. And then that's 200 for send the house off rip and then if you have this additional where you get the 60 points because you have the package that's an additional 10 so that'll be 240 or less depending on how many so make sure you always do your math like 
notepad and calculator when doing recruiting and scouting because nothing's worse and i've seen this so many times people get to the transfer portal or they're recruiting and they scout all these players and like oh my god i went over my hours i can't offer scholarships or i can't offer scholarships i can't offer send the house or anything so you're gonna lose them it, it ruins your whole week and i should to wait for advance and you ruined it right so add it up so let's say we want this guy right here as you see we're at the four spot and then we want this guy right here we'll offer him a scholarship and then we go to chris who actually wants to play for us again you could always take your chances with these guys and also make sure you back yourself up with someone who maybe you can get maybe you can't get with that being said it's kind of similar to recruiting here in this specific spot so send the house now you always can do hard and soft sell or sway depending on your franchise but i'm gonna save that all to recruiting videos i'm not gonna go through all that right now because i went through it a lot of other people have went through it hard sell is a bit tougher in this instance because you don't have their motivations activated yet. if you look on the right you don't know yet so it's like recruiting you kind of want to go through it so we're going to advance one week and you're gonna kind of get us gonna see how the transfer portal breaks down and of course something so important is scheduling visits so in the season you want to schedule for specific weeks based on who you think you could beat based on rewards, based on risk. In this one, you wanna schedule a visit right off rip because there's no benefits during these weeks. It's by week one, by week two, by week three, by week four. There's no up or down, win or loss. You wanna schedule them right away. Now, the only issue with scheduling them right away is that you have to base it on motivations, which you don't have yet. So there's a few ways to go about this. And that's why I said you wanna do it right away, but you also wanna keep in mind the motivations. There's a few ways to go about this. You're losing on a prospect. You know you're not going to win. You could just go for one of your A pluses and guess it. You can just go straight ahead and guess, which I don't really recommend. But if it's a, if it's a one last ditch call, someone you really want, you can do it. What I would recommend is obviously send the house first. Now the other aspect of this week one is you can always try to do a sway package. But keep in mind, sway is more successful when you actually have players that have that want what you're offering. So let's say you have A plus in campus lifestyle and that's something they care about, at least one of them, you're more likely to sway the remainder of them. So definitely keep that in mind. But again, this is a last ditch attempt. Remember transfer portal is very, it's all about perspective. If you're behind on one and you have to make a last ditch effort, maybe you go right for the sway. I'm an SEC team. You have a lot of good A pluses here and A's. You go right for the sway and try to get ahead. But with, mo with all things, if you're trying to be very, very efficient about it and you're trying to do it the right way, in most cases, and when it's close like this, I'm probably just going to do week one, send the house, then advance, see where I stand, see if I unlock anything and then go from there. We've advanced the week and you could see where we are with some of the players that we did offer some time on. If you go on here, you see on Lagway, we're up there, but we're still falling a little behind on LSU. On this one, Chris, we have a big lead and here we're falling behind. So this is where you want to start to change strategy. So for the one we're ahead on, we go to recruiting and we look. So right there alone, you see playing style, proximity to home is there, at which point you can do one of two things. You can try to do the, the math method, right? So take off, send the house. You can try to do the math method where you basically go on here and see if there's any that have both of those and a third one that's not an X. And here, we're almost there. So right here, we have pro potential and conference prestige. So in this case, we don't know which one it is because it could be either of these. We can't do process of elimination and we have playing time, so there's three. So in this case, what I'd recommend doing is going to a sway and swaying with whichever one is your A+. plus. So right here, I'd recommend a sway in the situation. I'd give it probably another 10, another five. And then with all that being said, I'm probably scheduling the visit this week because you know exactly what to do. So pretty much if you do, if you have a good first week and send the house, you can just schedule the visit. Right here is a great looking setup. You have almost maxed out on 50. You're gonna sway them for that third one, at which case you can then start doing the hard sell the week after. Now, if you could do the process elimination and you had some X's and you could mark them out, you could have started with the hard sell, which is what I'd recommend if you can, but you can't always do that. So we have this guy ready to go. We scheduled the visit with his thing that, with his motivation, we have it ready and we're gonna advance to the next week. Now we come on Zion Chris. We have a pretty large lead. We're definitely gonna get him, but our sway did not work. Although it's fine because at which point we go to hard sell and now we could definitely do process of elimination right here. So this one's an X, it's not that one. This one was an X, it's not that one. It's clearly the playing time one. We could lock it out right there. We could throw another 10 on. And it, just like I said, as you go through the transfer portal, it's just like recruiting. You see, I've been locked out on these guys. I didn't make their top three. Uh, this guy went to Texas. I didn't get him. These guys are still in play. And as that happens, some more scholarships open up, some more hours open up, at which point I'm probably going back to the transfer portal week two or three. Once I have an idea for my top two, like I'm getting that quarterback, I'm coming back on here and I'm going to sort by interest and I'm going to see what's still available. So you see right here, I'm not terribly behind here. I'm not competing with huge schools. I'm still, I'm, st I'm kind of behind on this one, but I'm still not competing with big schools. If I offer a scholarship, I probably get that same boost 
here this one's done avoid that one so on and so forth this is where i'm going through and i'm going to start using my hours to scout make sure you're scouting you have so many extra hours again depending on your school make sure you're scouting players and seeing what you could use and this is pretty much where i'm going back now and trying to make other offers of course be scouting week one but when you come back in the second or third time here in like what i call like the mid-season flip for recruiting same thing for the transfer portal come back in once you have your two top guys locked up or your one guy, you can come back in and kind of fill out the remaining scholarships. It's always good to use them. It improves your class. Make sure you're coming back through and kind of just scouting through who wants to be with you. Because at this point, if they don't really want to play for you, you probably can't compete for them at this point. You want to go for players who definitely want to be there. So I definitely would just sort by interest and just go through this list up until about maybe fourth. Some guys may have locked out already, so you don't want to be going any further than that. And I'd be adding some other guys to my board right here. So let's just say... We add this guy and we add this guy. Now, when adding players midway through, you don't have their motivations. You may have like one here, like you see some X's here. So you don't have much. You're going to want to go and just send the house and set them up as the brand new one. But of course, because you are, it is week three and they don't have a crazy amount of interest, you probably can still catch back up. So that's not the end of the world, especially depending on the program you are. So at this point, we have our board pretty much set up and we're going to just go ahead and advance it one last time here to see kind of where we're at. Also keep in mind that there are some coaching archetypes and packages that do improve the transfer process. So make sure you do check those out. I'm making a video going over the easiest ways to win in the transfer portal where I'll go over it more in depth, but make sure you do check that out. So Zion Chris has committed, like I told you, that one was the easy one. That's a lead, just like recruiting. Always take the guys that want to play for you while in the transfer portal being slightly more aggressive because you can be. And now if we look at this other one, Lagway committed there. And now if we look at these corners we did, as you see, we've now taken a quite a big jump to where we're now in play for these. All of our hours are back. You can still go through. And like I said, same advice applies. Go through, keep scouting, seeing what else kind of fell through the cracks at this point. You're now at week three, week four. At this point, it's near the end. You can try to make some last ditch efforts. As you see, a lot of these motivations opened up, so on and so forth. The same information applies here. Just like recruiting, but it's on a faster pace. And if you go back into the transfer portal, you can kind of see how your classes have kind of changed where people are getting players. You can see the transfer portal, what's available, what isn't, what's been already committed. Some years you're gonna get some times where there's five stars in there. Some years you're gonna get nothing. It's all hit or miss. It's based on what play people are doing, playing style, players who are transferring, persuasions that work, persuasions that don't. The transfer portal is essentially the free agency of recruiting. That's what it is. It's very simply put. If you have any questions about the transfer portal or kind of how it works, comment down below. Let me know, hit me on Twitter if you have any questions. Give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.